Hello everyone. Welcome to this demonstration of my app uh, called uh, Aurora Forecast 3D. I'm a professor at UNIS and I'm also the chief scientist of the Shell Hendrickson Observatory. Okay, let's uh, start the app. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for installing the app. Hope you can uh, use it as a tool to uh, track down the Aurora. Uh, the app is a multi-platform app, so it's uh, compiled up for uh, Windows, uh, for OS X, for Linux, and for Android, and for Apple phones, iOS. So, what do we have here? Okay, let me first uh, scale up the app so that we can see a little bit better. Something like this. Okay, what we see here is the 3D viewport of the app. The earth is illuminated by the sun and updated every second in time. This is the day side and this is the night side. The app uses a bunch of graphical buttons. This one is what I call the uh, uh, Aurora compass. And to the right here, we have a bunch of speed buttons. In the bottom, we have a speedometer design showing the current geomagnetic conditions. The green belt we see here in the center of the image is the Aurora oval. And before I continue, I will do a short lecture about how Aurora is formed. Well, in order to explain the Aurora, it's uh, necessary to visit our sun. And the sun is a variable star per definition. It's a massive nuclear furnace burning or fusing together hydrogen atoms into helium and massive amounts of energy. As seen in this uh, time lapse from the satellite SUHO, NASA satellite. Uh, below here is a uh, animation I made myself, shows the sun. And notice here that, uh, that the magnetic field of the sun is carried along with the eruptions of the sun. It's kind of frozen in with the mass that is erupted. And this mass is a gas of equal amount of electrons and protons. So the effect is that it's like you take the water hose in your garden and start spinning it. And then you notice that along this magnetic field line on the sun, there will be a flowing plasma out or solar mass. Um, and also notice that the interplanetary ma magnetic field or the magnetic field of the sun is either pointing downwards or upwards. And this effect is very important when it comes to what happens when this solar wind hits Earth. Luckily, Earth also has a magnetic field formed like a dipole. Here you have the day side, and here is the night side. When the solar wind up arrives, it's important to notice the direction of the solar magnetic field. In this case, it's pointing upwards. And the solar wind just blows past this system because there is no uh, connection between these magnetic field lines. So you get a a compression of Earth's magnetic field on the day side here, and the magnetic field of the Earth is dragged into a long tail on the night side. If the magnetic field of the solar wind is pointing downwards, then everything opens up. Then you get a reconnection between the magnetic field lines on the day side, and solar plasma is allowed to enter these magnetic clefts, forming day side aurora here on the day side. And on the night side, the, the solar wind is dragged into the tail and then it reconnects again over here and are shot back with high energy forming night side aurora on the, on the night side of Earth. And also notice that these impact areas 
due to symmetry of the whole system, are formed like ovals, where the center is the magnetic poles. Well, let's have a look at the aurora itself. Over here, you see a auroral arc, and it stretches from around 100 kilometers of altitude up to maybe six, 700 kilometers of uh, altitude. Uh, the arc is mostly red on top and more structured green as you go further into the atmosphere. So what's happening over here? Well, the uh, solar electrons or protons, uh, here I've marked it as the primary electron, will, as it's guided by the magnetic field of the Earth, collide with the atmosphere upper atoms. And uh, so we have a primary electron hitting a, for example, a oxygen atom, which has eight electrons spinning around its core. Uh, after the collision, one of these electrons will be kicked in up into a higher orbit. And when it falls down, it will emit light at a specific wavelength. If the energy is uh, uh, relatively low, the light that will be emitted is red at 6300 Ohmstrom, as you can see at, in the top of the aurora arc here. If the energy is higher, then the electron will penetrate further down into the atmosphere and the light will be green at uh, 5577 Ohmstrom. If the energy is really high, it will hit a lower edge of the atmosphere around 100 kilometers of altitude where the atmosphere is becoming more dense and heavier, we will have, for example, molecules presence. And uh, the light emitted from these molecules can be seen as fast moving blobs, uh, mainly red or violet, moving along the aurora curve. Okay, let's have a, a closer look at the aurora oval. Here you have a correct view of Earth, if you ask me where the center in this image is the uh, magnetic pole. And we have a fixed coordinate system where 12 magnetic local time is always pointing towards the sun. So we have the day side and we have the night side. The data you see here is from a American NOAA satellite and it clearly defines the poleward border and the equator border of the Aurora O. Uh, also notice that Earth is rotating beneath this oval <coughs> with the center, of course, in the geographical pole, around the geographical pole. Ah, furthermore, the, uh, the Russians uh, had a bunch of ice drift stations during the Cold War that actually measured these borders using all sky camera data. Later on, the Americans did the same things with uh, satellites. The size and location of this aurora oval is highly dependent on solar wind conditions. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between solar wind conditions and how disturbed the magnetic field is on Earth. And we measure this uh, uh, geomagnetic activity as a function of Kp index. Okay, uh, let's have a closer look at geomagnetic activity. First of all, these curves shows the local variations of the geomagnetic field as measured from KHO. The green curve is the vertical component. The blue curve is the horizontal component, both measured in nanotesla. And the red curve shows you the deviation measured in degrees of the horizontal component. Note that if we have no aurora, these curves would have been totally flat. Now, if we measure the maximum disturbance of the horizontal component during a three hour period and subdivide these measurements according to this table over here, we can define the local K index. So zero K means uh, uh, measurements in the region zero to five nanotesla and everything above uh, 500 nanotesla disturbance of the horizontal field means K index nine. Now, if we calculate the weighted averages 
average of k indices from a network of geomagnetic activities, we can define the kp index or the global kp index, the planetary kp index. And it tells you how disturbed is the global magnetic field. And furthermore, if we use satellite data from satellites that are located one hour upstream in the solar wind, we can also get the predicted KP index. And that is what the, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center gives us. Uh, prediction times are up from one hour up to three days. Well, with the KP index, we can easily calculate the size and the location of the aurora oval. Okay, let's uh, get back to the app. Uh, so down here, the speedometer, you get the latest uh, KP uh, index from NUA. And this is the no cast, and it's connected to these three buttons over here. So uh, this is now, if you hit plus zero, uh, plus three means three hours ahead, and plus six means six hours ahead. If you want to see the long-term forecasts, then you go to this module called FCST, forecast, short for forecast, and you get the three-day forecast from NOAA. You can click on these values as well, for example here, and then go back and see the effect of, on the aurora oval. Notice we have a 33-hour forecast at the moment. Let's go to NOCAST and here we can simply zoom in and out using these buttons. You can rotate the globe. And of course, this button means go home. Uh, if I zoom out and I hit this uh, button over here, that means I will enable the star constellations. And uh, notice that you will have a powerful laser being fired up to the object you are pointing at. For example, here we are pointing at the moon. I could, uh, for example, also go and click on a star. Ah, that's the female water snake. Uh, if you want more information on the uh, target, just hit the information button here and you will be directed to Wikipedia where you can read more about the constellations. The same goes for the moon, for example. Uh, if you hit, uh, if you can locate a planet, here is a planet. What's that? That is Venus. Okay, more information about Venus and so on. Uh, the lower left button over here gives you a text line forecast from NOAA. It's a sliding test like this. Okay, let's go home, turn off the star constellation. Let's zoom in a little bit here. The red point you see here, that is your station point. The orange uh, point here is the ground track point. Let's put it over the station point, zoom in a little bit. The circular transparent disk here is your sk sky field of view as seen from the station point. Or if you look at the sky compass, this gives you the, the uh, your local sky as seen from your station point. And notice that 31% of your sky is now filled with aurora. Aha, notice the uh, the sky cover of the aurora has changed to 35% <laughs> during my small little break here. Well, let's have a more detailed view of the compass than just click it. And here you will see your local sky view as seen from your station point, in this case, Longyearbyen. Here's the aurora. We have north, south, east, and west. And the outer circle here is your Horizon. Uh, you can enable the star signs. Uh, you can also click on any of them. Let's see what's that. Oh, Cygnus or well, the Swan. Some more information. Yes. Uh, furthermore, if uh, you want to know more about where your sun or moon is, you just click the sun module over here. 
And here you have the sun and moon elevation for Longyearbyen during, during the day. Uh, the, this uh, lower 10 degree limit here in elevation uh, gives you the time when you are able to see aurora, when it's, when it's dark enough. If you click on the curves, you can get more detailed information about the elevation and azimuth of the sun and the moon. Let's go back to the globe. No cast. This I button over here shows you the probability to see aurora from your uh, station point. Let me show you another feature of the app. The app actually support uh, satellites as well. If you enable that one, uh, let us go and choose a satellite, for example, International Space Station, and you just uh, hit track here to locate this, the uh, International Space Station. Uh, oh, there are several satellites here. Let's, let's click on one of them. Demi, let's have some more information about that one. And then we are directed to the homepage and to YO, and you can see detailed information about the satellite. Okay, let's uh, disable the satellites and return to home. Uh, here's another feature I also would like to demonstrate. Uh, let's uh, put our uh, track point over this location, for example, then just click on it, and we'll get a blue bubble over here. What's that? And then just hit information. And you will be directed to the open street map showing what the name of the city. That is uh, Düsseldorf in Germany. Okay, before I end, I would like to show you how to make your own station point. Then you go to the settings menu. And here is the Longyearbyen station showing the latitudes, longitude, altitude, and so on. You can uh, edit it directly if you want to, or you could use a little trick here. If you turn on my location, which is the top of the list of all the predefined stations here, you go to my location, that should enable your, uh, your location service on your mobile phones. Uh, then you just, uh, uh, go to edit and, uh, for example, give it another name, like home. And then when you're done that, you can check, oh, the station is valid, and then just add it to the list. Um, that's it. Well, if you want more detailed information about uh, how to use the app, you can uh, read the manual of the app, which is found here. And uh, with that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show and uh, uh, happy Aurora hunting and stay healthy.